Hello, and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve quadratic inequalities in one variable. So we can take a look at these first four inequalities over here. These are all quadratics. We can tell that because they all have a power of 2. And they're inequalities because they have a greater or less than symbol. And they're one variable because there's only x, even though we see a, b, and c. But a, b, and c are actually going to be real numbers, um, and a is not going to be zero. Otherwise, if a were zero, then it would be a line. So we can see that we can solve a quadratic inequalities graphically, as you did in the investigation, or we can solve it algebraically. Now, the solution to a quadratic inequality in one variable, we can see that it has no values. It can have one value or an infinite number of values. So I'm going to show you how this works. So here are the steps to solving a quadratic inequality. So the first thing that we should do is we should solve the related equation uh, to find the roots. So notice that I've changed the inequality from a greater or less than symbol, but now it's actually equals. We're going to plot the roots on a number line, just so that we can visually see where these numbers go. And then when we graph it, if the inequality is less than or greater than, we're going to use an open circle. Since these values are not solutions to inequality, because it's less than or greater than, we don't include that number. If it has the equal to, as you can see in these ones here, we're going to use a closed circle, or we're going to color them in. And this is because those values are actually solutions to the inequality as well. Now, the root will most likely divide the number line into three intervals. So we can use test points to determine the intervals that satisfy the inequality. So when we use these test points, and then the inequality is true, that means that that interval is now a solution to the inequality. Let's take a look at an example. So we're going to solve x squared plus 2x minus 8 greater or equal to 0. We're going to do this by factoring because I think it's the easiest way to find the roots. And then we're going to use test points to see if the intervals are true or false. All right, so we're going to find two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to 2. So that's going to be x plus 4 and x minus 2. And this is greater or equal to 0. Or you can actually even put equal to 0. So let's actually do that. And so the x values that make this equation equal to 0 would be negative 4 and 2. So I've created a chart here that helps me to organize my information. So I'm going to put negative 4 here. And I'll put 2 here, kind of acting, kind of pretending that this is my number line here. All right, so this divides my number line into three intervals. We have x is less than or equal to negative 4. x is between negative 4 and 2. And we have x is greater or equal to 2. So we're going to pick a number in each of these intervals. So a number less than negative 4, let's choose negative 5. Between negative 4 and 2, probably the easiest number to choose is 0. And a number greater than 2, let's choose 3. So these are all our x values. All right, so we're going to take the number negative 5, 0, and 3, and we're going to substitute that into our quadratic inequality. So this will be negative 5 squared plus 2 times negative 5 minus 8, greater or equal to 0. Sorry, I didn't leave much space, so we're going to have 25 minus 10 minus 8, greater or equal to 0. So if 7 is greater or equal to 0, and that is true. So we're going to do that with the other two numbers as well, x is 0 and x equals 3. So why don't you go and do that, pause the video, and you can try this for yourself. All right, so you can see that I've substituted the values into my inequality. So I have, for the second interval, I have negative 8 is greater than equal to 0. So that is not true. So we can say this is false. And then in the last interval, 7 is greater or equal to 0, and that is 
also true. All right, so what can we conclude? So going back to the inequality at the top, we want to know that where is x squared plus 2x minus 8? What values do we plug into x so that it's always going to be greater or equal to 0? So we can see that is true in the first interval and in the third interval. So therefore, the solution to this inequality is x can be anything that is less than or equal to negative 4, or x is greater or equal to 2. So let's just kind of do a quick summary. So we factor to find the two roots which split our um, inequality into three intervals. We're going to substitute points, a test point, into the inequality to see if it's true. So we can see that when I plug in 0, or even if I wanted to plug in 1, or negative 1, or negative 2, or negative 3, those numbers are all within the middle interval. We would see that this would always be false. So that means that any numbers from negative 4 to 2 would not satisfy the inequality. But when we plug in numbers that are less than negative 4 and greater than 2, the inequality would be true. So our solution is x is less than or equal to negative 4, and x is greater or equal to 2. All right, let's take a look at another example. So here I have solved this one, which is negative x squared plus 6x minus 8, less than 0. We're going to factor, but I'm going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do something called sign analysis. All right, so same thing. We're going to factor, and I'm going to take out a negative 1 first. So we have negative x squared minus 6x plus 8. And I'm going to make this equal to 0 for now. Okay, so then we're going to factor, find two numbers that multiply to 8 and add to negative 6. So that's x minus 4 and x minus 2. So my roots are 4 and 2. So again, I'm going to use this table to help me organize my information. I'll put 2 and 4 at the top here, as if this was on the number line. Divide my interval into three parts. So x is less than 2. x is between. 2 and 4, and the last interval, x is greater than 4. All right, same thing, we're going to pick a test point. So a number less than 2 is a nice number to pick a 0. Between 2 and 4, well, let's pick 3. And a number greater than 4, let's choose 5. All right, this time I'm going to do something a little bit different. Instead of plugging it straight into um, the inequality, I'm actually going to plug it into the factored form. So assuming that we factored this correctly, we're going to put 0 into this part right here. So I have negative 0 minus 4, 0 minus 2. Okay. So I know I have a negative sign here. 0 minus 4 gives me another negative number. 0 minus 2 gives me a negative number. And actually, it doesn't really matter whether that number, what that number is like what the value is we just are concerned about the sign so we can see that we have three negatives and when we multiply three negatives together we know that the answer is going to be negative so i'm going to put a negative sign in the bottom all right let's do this again with x equals three so we have minus three minus four three minus two all right so we have the negative in the front three minus four is a negative number three minus two is a positive number a negative times a negative times a positive is a positive number. So we're going to put plus. All right, last one, x is 5. So we have negative 5 minus 4, 5 minus 2. 5 minus 4 is a positive number. 5 minus 2 is an, also a positive number. So negative times positive times positive is negative. All right, so we're going to go back to our inequality at the very top up here. And we can see that we want the x squared the negative x squared plus x minus 8 we want to know where that is less than 0 so we want to know where this part over here is negative and from our chart we can see that it's negative on the end of our graph so in the first interval where x is less than 2 and where x is greater than 4 so this is the solution to this quadratic inequality because that is where the quadratic inequality is going to be negative. 
So this is the second way to solve a quadratic inequality. The first one we used test points and we actually found if the inequality was true or false. Here we are also factoring and using test points, but we're looking to see where it's negative and positive. And now I'm gonna show you a third way. This way you actually find to be the quickest. So we're gonna use graphing to determine the solution to this inequality here. So what we need to do first is we need to move all the terms to one side. So we're gonna have x squared minus 2x minus 8, and that's gonna be less than or equal to zero. And we're going to complete the square. So we have x squared minus 2x. So if I add one, I will complete the square because we're gonna take two or negative two. We half that, which is negative one. We square negative one and it gives us positive one. So remember we have to add one and subtract one so that it maintains the zero property. And then we still have this minus eight, which we haven't done anything with, so we'll bring that down. This part we can factor, so that's gonna be x minus one, all squared, and then we can combine these two terms to get negative nine is less than or equal to zero. All right, so we can do a quick table of values. Okay, so we know that our vertex is at one and negative nine, we can choose a couple of the numbers on either side. Two and three. So we're gonna plug these numbers in into the quadratic equation right here, x minus one, all squared minus nine. So when I plug that in, I'm gonna just tell you what the numbers are. We get negative five, negative eight, negative eight, and negative five. So we're gonna plot these five points onto our graph here. So negative five, and we have negative eight. Well, this one's a little bit off the graph. So we'll plot this down here, negative nine, two negative eight, and three negative five. All right, so we do have this graph here, and it doesn't quite reach the x-axis. So we're gonna pick two more points. So I'm gonna pick four, and we'll also pick negative two. So again, plugging into our quadratic equation here, x minus one all squared, minus nine, we get zero and zero. So this is helpful because now I can extend my graph all the way up past the x-axis, which is what you want, okay? And then what we can see is that we wanna know, when we go back to look, we wanna look at this equation here, so where is the quadratic less than or equal to zero? So graphically, I can see that this part here, which I'll highlight, the bottom middle part, that part is below the x-axis. This is where it's less than or equal to zero. So when we write our solution, we are writing the interval, the x, because it's only one variable, it is the x values from negative two to positive four. So we would, can then say that, therefore our solution is that x is between negative two to positive four, because that is the x values where the graph is below the x-axis. Now one more point before we close here is that our solution, um, the inequalities matches what the equation was. So you can see that these ones are less than or equal to, equal to because our equation here was equal to. If we scroll back to the one that we just did here with the less than, notice there is no equal to. So when we write our solution, there also is no equal to on the bottom. All right, and that is how you solve a quadratic inequality in one variable. Thank you very much.